everybody, it's Chris Eads, Wootini over at GayGamer.net, here with another weekly video podcast. Um, this week I want to start by discussing uh, the new Godzilla movie. Because um, um, I knew I wasn't going to like Spider-Man 2, um, I just had a feeling, and I was afraid that X-Men Days of Future Past was going to fall into the same problem with having throwing too much stuff at the wall to see what sticks, and just ending up with a big mess. Um, so, I had my heart set on Godzilla as being this month's uh, new release movie, summer blockbuster type, that would, you know, be really awesome and, and exciting and really cool. Um, so, I was sadly disappointed in, in, in the new Godzilla. Um, basically... The problem, my problem with the thing is, Godzilla is not actually a bad movie. For what it is, it is very well done, and it's fine for what it is. The problem is, is that that's not what I wanted, you know? Like, I understand that you want to build anticipation for Godzilla, his first appearance in the film. So, okay, fine, so you want to take a half an hour, 45 minutes or more, to, I didn't actually check my watch to see when Godzilla made his first appearance, but it felt like, you know, a good half hour, 45 minutes or more. Um, not quite an hour. I don't think it was an hour, but it was probably around 45 minutes when Godzilla makes his first actual full-on appearance. Um, and I get that you want to build it, you know, you want to build the suspense, you want to build up to that. I get it, it's fine. Throw us a little other monster and some other stuff, and, and it's fine. You know, it wasn't like it was boring building up to it. The problem that I had was, he builds up to this grand moment. Godzilla makes his first appearance. He looks amazing. He's spectacular. He's gargantuan. He's amazing. It's like, oh my god, it's freaking Godzilla. And then he cuts away to a kid on a couch. No, I'm trying, I'm not spoiling the movie for you, except that there's a really bad cutaway, where right when you're getting all amped up to see Godzilla, and then he cuts away, and you watch some of the, you know, you watch some of the footage of Godzilla on a television screen with him and his mom. That's not what I paid $10 to see. Later on, there's another really obnoxious cutaway where Godzilla's doing some rampaging, and it's all very thrilling and exciting, and you're like, ooh, and then it cuts away. And I'm like, no, 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 no. You know, and I get what he was going for, you know, the human side of the Godzilla rampage and whatever. The problem is, is that, like, okay, the director, Gareth Edwards, he directed a low-budget sci-fi movie called Monsters, which you can find on Netflix. I found it on Netflix and watched it a few months ago. And... It's a fine movie. I mean, it's not great, um, you know. But because it was a low-budget movie, the monsters are kept off-camera for the most part. You get a little bit here, a little tease here, a little tease there. And then at the very end, in the last scene, you finally get to see the full-on monsters. And I get that because it's a low-budget movie. But this is a major summer blockbuster that had millions upon millions upon millions of dollars to throw at the screen... And I just was a little disappointed that we had to wait until the last half hour of the movie before we finally got some good Godzilla action. Um, because basically what you're stuck with is these very underdeveloped human characters running around doing stuff that isn't nearly as interesting as watching a couple of giant monsters slug it out over San Francisco. Um, it's also funny because... Uh, you can now, you know, like, there are certain actors uh, who are good actors. Like, I've seen Elizabeth Olsen in things where she's good. She's not good in this. Because um, there are certain actors who are excellent actors working with another human being, but when acting against nothing or on a green screen or a tennis ball on a stick or whatever, they're not as good. Um, so I really have a lot of respect for, uh, like the late Bob Hoskins, who was amazing in Who Framed Roger Rabbit, and you truly believed that every moment he was interacting with that actual cartoon character, you know? 
So some of the actors in Godzilla are a little better at acting to nothing than others. Um, and I mean, I just never, it just didn't, you know, gel. Um, but I was mostly just disappointed because I wanted to watch a bunch of monsters fighting it out, and I had to wait an hour and a half before I got to that. Um, so, if you want to watch Giant Monster slug it out, um, watch Pacific Rim, and then when Godzilla comes out on, on HBO or DVD or something, you can uh, just fast forward to the monster scenes. Because they are spectacular and really well done. Um, there just wasn't as much as I had wanted there to be. Um, uh, so, yeah. So now I'm hoping that, uh, hopefully, uh, X-Men Days of Future Past is as good as I'm hearing. I don't know. Um, the other thing that I wanted to talk about this week was, uh, the big news that Microsoft basically caved and said, okay, fine, we'll knock $100 off the price of the Xbox One and release it without a Kinect. Um, which is very interesting because it's basically them admitting defeat, I figure. You know, that's that's just how I look at it. It's like, they're fine, they're, because that was their gimmick. That was their thing. They're like, we have the Kinect, it's motion controls, you can swipe on your TV and do stuff, and that was their edge over the PlayStation 4. But now they're like, okay, fine, you don't want the Kinect, nobody's using the Kinect, like, no, developers weren't really using it anyway, so they're just like, okay, fine, here's a console. And then basically it's just, it's the same as the PlayStation 4. I mean, okay, there's the argument that the PlayStation 4 is technically more powerful than the Xbox 360, but, you know, I don't feel like that really matters, because, you know, it only matters when you're talking about the PlayStation 4 as compared to PlayStation 3, or the Xbox One compared to the Xbox 360. That's where you need to have an improvement, and it's more powerful. But in the same generation, it's I don't feel like it's ever that big of a deal that you're like, okay, like I never th saw any m noticeable difference to my untrained eyes playing a 360 game versus a PS4 3 game, you know? Like, I'm just like, they all look pretty, you know? You're all pretty. It's fine. You're all very, very pretty. Just relax. Um, but it's a little sad because I did think that the Kinect was kind of awesome when it came out. I did buy one. Of course, I did buy one mostly just to play Dance Central because Dance Central was amazing. I had tried it, um, you know, years and years ago, back when I attended E3 a few times. One of the times I was at E3, I had come out of a rock band presentation, and at the booth they had a little setup for Dance Central, and the guy was like, hey, do you want to try this new game? It's called Dance Central, and it's a new Kinect game. And I said, oh, you know what? I've been meaning to try some Kinect games while I'm here, because it's not out yet, and I was curious how it would work. So I said, yes, I would very much like to try your Kinect game. And I got up there, and I danced to Funky Town, and had the time of my life. And I was like, this is the best game ever. I love it so much. And basically, right there, I'm like, you have sold me on a Kinect. Because the Dance Central came out with the Kinect on that day, and I said, that's fine. So I bought myself a Kinect, and I bought Dance Central, and I said, yay me. And that was great. Um, and that was basically it. Um, I mean, I did try a couple other games, like, Connectables was like, okay, you can pet your animal and interact with it, and it was cute, but harmless fun. Um, and, like, the Connect Sports, it was like, okay, fine, you know, it was, it was okay. Um, the only other title, Connect title, oh, alright, and I will admit, I will admit to picking up a copy of, uh, Connect Star Wars, uh, at a GameStop, because it was, like, used for, like, $17.99, but I put it back down. It needs to be a little cheaper than that, I think. Maybe if it was, like, 10 bucks, I could cave, just because it's so ridiculous, and I kind of want it just for the dancing game, because the songs are just so stupid. <laughs> um, the only other Kinect game that I ever really, really thought was great was, um, Disneyland Kinect, where they recreated Disneyland virtually and you could just point your arm and move around, and then instead of rides, you would have mini-games, where you'd sword fight Captain Hook and, you know, that sort of thing, and fly around Big Ben and whatever. Um, 
that I thought was a nice use of the Kinect sensor, but most games didn't really use it, um, unless they were like specifically for Kinect. Um, so again, the Xbox One comes out and they're like, look, it's Kinect. And the problem is, is that a lot of us don't have the giant living rooms that the people in these, you know, commercials do, where, you know, you have all this space in front of your TV where you can sit on your couch and go like this, or stand up in front of your couch and go like this. I don't have that. I live in a small apartment in Brooklyn, so I have my Kinect aiming to the side of my couch where I have a small amount of floor space where I can actually move around and play things like Dance Central that, you know, I need to move. Um, but... I've ne so I, I've never been able to just sit there and use the Kinect to browse through menus because it's not aiming at my couch. Um, and so, like, I don't have an Xbox One yet, but if I did buy an Xbox One, I wouldn't really use the Kinect because I wouldn't want to use it to browse the menus because it's kind of annoying. I'd rather just use the buttons. Um, but there also weren't any games that were really, really using the Kinect yet. Um, I mean, there's some in development. I mean, Fantasia is going to be probably pretty cool. Um, and they did do a new Kinect Sports. But nothing was really using it. Um, and it was mostly like, you know... I, I remember, like, Mass Effect was the only game it had, like, better with Kinect on it, you know? And basically you had, like, voice commands, and you could command your squad with voice commands. Um, but I never really trusted it, so basically all I ever used it for was to yell health pack or whatever you yelled to suddenly get a health pack to heal. Because that was actually kind of convenient. While you're playing and you're in the middle of battle, you can just yell health or whatever. And it uses a health pack to heal you. And I'm like, yeah, and I didn't even have to stop what I was doing. That's awesome. You know, but like, that's basically it. So, and, and I'll use it like if I'm watching Netflix, maybe I can just lay on the couch. Like I've done that where I've been like really sick and I've been like laying on the couch and I'll just be like, you know, Xbox play. Next. Pause. Fast forward. You know, whatever. And I don't have to, like, get up and push a button. But now I pretty much kind of use Netflix on my PS3 because I have a remo an actual remote control for that. Because um, it's also my Blu-ray player. Um, because trying to remember which, you know, controller buttons do which is... I can't remember that. <laughs> so I just use the remote because I'm stupid. Um... I don't know if dropping the Kinect is going to actually help boost Xbox One sales, because for me, I feel like you boost sales by having really awesome games for the system uh, that you can't get anywhere else, but exclusives are few and far between now. So I don't know if, if dropping the Kinect, making it $100 cheaper, if people will say, oh, I want to play this game. Oh, do I buy an Xbox One or a PS4 to play it on? That's going to be the question to see which way people go. Because um, I do feel like the Kinect thing, they might have left a bad taste in consumers' mouths and they might go PlayStation this generation. I don't know. Um, I still don't have either of the next-gen consoles because neither of them have... Um, I guess it's current-gen now, isn't it? Huh, I don't know. Um, I don't have an Xbox One or a PS4 yet because there has yet to be a game that I can only play on one of those systems that I really want to play that will make me shell out four to five hundred dollars to play it. Um, so it'll probably be, you know, not until after Christmas. Because I figure by Christmas we'll have lots more stuff and maybe by next year there'll be a price drop and I might pick one. We'll see. Um... So, weigh in in the comments if, uh, if you think you might buy an Xbox One now that it doesn't have a Kinect and it's cheaper. Or if you've bought an Xbox One with a Kinect and you're irritated that you wasted an extra hundred dollars and now you have this useless peripheral that nobody's going to make games for. Because if it came with the system, like, I get it, like, because before people wouldn't use the Kinect very much because not everybody had one. But now they were basically saying, everyone who has an Xbox One will have a Kinect, you should develop for the Kinect. And still people didn't really want to do that. So, you know, that's a little frustrating too. So now you've got this peripheral that nobody's really going to use at all, because now it's optional again. So forget it. You'll have great games from Harmonix, but that's probably about it. Um, 
So, uh, I will see you next week, and we'll see what we have to talk about then. See you then. Bye.